Welcome everyone to our continuous coverage on theCUBE of AWS reInvent 2021. Mm -hmm. I'm your host, Dave Nicholson, and I am absolutely delighted to be joined by two folks from Unisys, a company that has been in the business of helping people with everything related to IT for a very, very long time. We're here to talk about data modernization, app modernization with Anupriya Ramraj, Vice President of Cloud Solution Management at Unisys. Yes. Along with Anupam Sahai, VP and CTO of Cloud Solution Engineering at Unisys. And uh, just so that we keep everything clear, right. I'm just going to call you Anu yes. and Anupam, yeah. and we'll all know who we're talking to. Sure. The funny thing is, I'm David Nicholson, or Dave Nicholson. Dave Vellante is one of the founders of SiliconANGLE the Cube. So usually it's two Daves battling it out. <laughs> <laughs> Today it's two Anus. So two Anus, <laughs> yes. So, so two Anus. So I get to be David and he's Dave typically. <laughs> so we're completely, we're completely used to this. All right. So, so tell me about what Unis is doing, Unisys is doing in the arena of app modernization and data modernization and migration into cloud. U Unisys has a long and storied history of managing IT in people's environments, I, you know, in the sort of on-premises world, as well as, as, well as cloud I, now. I, but uh, Anu, tell us, tell us a little about what Unisys is doing in this space and then we'll, we'll double click and dive in. Uh, absolutely, Dave. Um, <clears throat> So you, you're probably very, very familiar with the six R's of modernization, right? All the way from migration modernization, all the way from re-platform, re-host, to, to the other side of the spectrum, refactor and re-architect, right? So what, what Unisys does is that it takes clients on that journey, right? So we see clients in different stages of that journey. There are clients that come to us, uh, we recently brought on board a pipeline. They're very early in their journey, they're just talking about their first set of migrations. There are clients that have taken the leap and done 75% of their workload is on cloud. Even for Unisys, 95% of, more than 95% of our workload actually runs on cloud, public cloud. Right? So different stages of the journey. But no matter where they are in the journey, really moving the needle on modernization. Right? And what do we mean by modernization? It's, it's taking um, advantage of the innovation in cloud, whether it's serverless or containers or AI, and bringing that to the client so that they can drive those business outcomes. That's what we are passionate about doing. Right? And uh, we can talk to you about a couple of clients where we've done this on, uh, but I'd like to Anupam to add on. Sure. Yeah, no. and, 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 just, and before you dive in, Anupam, I want to hear specifically about the inhibitors that you're seeing the things that are causing friction right. in movement to cloud. Yeah, so cloud is a transformative uh, technology, is, is disruptive, and it brings about lots of benefits that are very well um, understood but not realized. Um, lower to total cost of ownership, higher security, innovation and agility, but the challenges that you see for customers to really benefit from moving and migrating to the cloud are related to security and compliance that comes up to be the top pain point, followed by cost of ownership. There are optimizations that you need to do before you can benefit from really leveraging the benefits from the cloud. And then innovation and agility, how to derive that? And, and there are certain things around app and data modernization, data analytics, AI ML, that really helps realize those values, but it needs a, con a concerted effort and a drive and a push to transform your infrastructure from where you are today to really get to derive the true benefits from the cloud. And we do a, a cloud barometer study um, of about thousands of organizations from a Unisys perspective, right. Dave. And as uh, Anupam was saying, um, more than 60% of our clients say, Security is the biggest inhibitor. They want help with security. No, no, you're saying the inhibitor to going to cloud is security? It, to accelerating the cloud journey. They no, want, is that perception? Or right. is that, but but is, that, is that hesitancy uh, just perception? Or is it reality? That's a great question, Dave. And, so, and, you, and you don't have to be gentle with me what? like you might with the client. <laughs> right. you, know, you, could, you could reach over and smack me and say, get over it. You're going to be fine, Dave. <laughs> actually, um, Anupam leaned into it already. In many cases, when you, when you actually get to your cloud configuration right, you're probably more secure in the cloud. But it's getting clients confident with that setup. That's where the, the rubber meets the road, right? And that's where we come in to say, um, do you understand the shared responsibility model with cloud? 
what does the cloud provider do? What is being here at AWS reInvent, what does AWS bring to the table for security? This is what the client is responsible for. For example, application security is completely their client's responsibility, right, in most cases. So, um, just working with the client so that they understand the shared responsibility model, and then making sure we protect all the different layers of the stack with security, right? Even, even as apps are developed, you need to have DevSecOps pipeline, right? So, I didn't say DevOps, I said DevSecOps, because we want to make security a part of developing your applications and deploying them in cloud as well. So that's what we bring to the table in making sure clients feel confident in, in accelerating their cloud journey. So Arupa, you can deal with customers like me who, who truly believe that my money is safer in a coffee can buried in my backyard <laughs> than it is in a bank, right? <laughs> with all those banking people <laughs> wandering around. Um, so when you start looking at an environment and you, and you look at the totality of an IT infrastructure landscape, mm -hmm. how do you go about determining what is the low hanging fruit? What makes sense right. to move first from, right. and is that, is that always an ROI discussion that comes into play? And are your customers, I, I like to give like five questions at the same time to confuse sure. you. Right. And, are, and are your customers expecting to immediately save money? You know, how, how big is the ROI right. conversation in this? It's a great, con uh, great question. So, a couple of things need to be considered. First is to understand where is the customer in the digital transformation journey? Are they a green field where they only have on-premise data center and they're trying to get to the cloud? Or they already have tipped their toes and moved to the cloud and in the cloud, how far advanced are they in their transformation journey? Have they, not, have they done apps and data modernization? Do they have a, a management and operations capability for day one and day two? cloud ops and fin ops and security ops, and do, are they leveraging the power of the cloud, the copious amounts of data that cloud brings to the table. Uh, the, the, the important thing to understand is that 80% of the tools that work in the on-prem do not work in the cloud. So you have to understand the very nature of the cloud and to deal with it differently. The same old tools and tricks will not work in the cloud. And I, I call it the three V's in the cloud. Velocity, volume, and, and variety of data is different in the cloud. So when you're talking about security, you need to look at uh, the cloud infrastructure posture management. You need to look at the cloud workload posture management. You need to look at data that's available and analyze and harness the data using AI ML and data analytics. So you need a new set of tricks, as it were, to really harness the power of the cloud to derive the benefits from increased security, lower cost of ownership, and innovation and agility. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think I'm touched tell, tell, on. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I've yeah, touched yeah. on it with FinOps, right? And you asked the question, Dave, around, is that the biggest driver in terms of savings to get to the, to the cloud? And I think it's definitely one of the bigger factors yep. um, because, and we believe to, to realize that, we offer a FinOps service. And a FinOps service, not just, the, for a cloud, purchasing models are different, right? It's not like your data center planning. Um, and if I'm talked about the tools being different, it's more than the tools, right? So you could do reserved instances or you could do spot instances. Completely different ball game with, with AWS, right? Or you could do AWS savings plans. Are you maximizing all of that? And even beyond that, are you thinking beyond that into like AWS container support, um, EKS? Are you talking about serverless? And that could completely change your bill and your total con of cost of ownership. You talk, Dave, about past databases, right? So, platform as a service, and that could completely change your total cost of ownership there as well. So, are you really maximizing that, and do you have a FinOps service around that? Do you have a trusted partner who can help you with FinOps is, I think, an important consideration there. Yeah. Well, Anupriya, I know you're dying to talk about a customer example. Oh, sure. Make it, make it real for us. Give us an example of, uh, of this process in action, where Unisys has helped a customer on the journey. Absolutely, Dave. So, um, uh, one example that comes to mind is uh, a large public university, and they've got about a half a million students, and they've got 20 plus campuses around the US. 
uh, in California, so I might have given myself away there. <laughs> but, uh, and yeah. and, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, what they've done is um, initially they are big into AWS and they are into their, cl uh, high, into their cloud journey uh, big time and they are a hybrid deployment at this point. And initially uh, they, uh, when they subscribed to our FinOps service, uh, we, we brought in all the different uh, thinking around working with the different organizations. Really it's like business planning. Right, you need to know which is your most significant apps and what you want to invest in them in terms of modernization and in tuning your AWS spend. And so we did that, and so we got them uh, about a 33% cost saving. And what they did was then, they took, looked at all of their AWS accounts across the campuses and said, we want FinOps across all of them, let's consolidate all of them. So that's, that's the power of a FinOps service, about a 33% saving right there. Well that is particularly yeah. exciting for me because I assume that they're going to be lowering my kids' tuition next year. <laughs> uh, so I'll, so I'll, be, I'll be looking forward to that. And now, Anupam, we know why she was kicked out of the, uh, you know, the, the, the intelligence agency. <laughs> can't keep a secret. You know. <laughs> let's, let, 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 let's talk about an amusement park, uh, famous for its rodent, but I'm not going to say the name. <laughs> so, so, Anupam, talk about uh, the technology space that you know, we're in the midst of here at AWS reInvent. Right. Um, each time we have a keynote, we're hit with an almost a mind-boggling number of <laughs> announcements. Right. right. Customers can't keep, keep this stuff straight. There are 475 right. different kinds of instances. It used to be, we have S3 and we have EC2. Right. Would you, right. Like, would you like one or would you like both? <laughs> right. How, how do you help customers make sense of this? Yeah, no, that's, that's a great uh, question because uh, the cloud is, uh, I, as I said, cloud has three Vs. Velocity, variety, and volume of data, and and the new kinds of services that are available day by day is growing. The key is to really figure out again, map the business objectives that you as a customer or company are trying to achieve. Understand where you are in your digital trans transformation journey, and then based on the two, um, and assess where you and, and and companies like Unisys can work with the customer to assess their, what I call, the digital transformation posture, which will then give, a, give us clear indications or recommendations on what are the next stages in the transformation of journey. Mm -hmm. So whether it's, whether you want to improve your security posture, whether you want to improve your cost of ownership posture, whether you want to go to, go to the cloud and leverage DevSecOps mm -hmm. to benefit from the innovation and agility, we can help you. Unisys has DevSecOps as a service uh, containers as a service where we can help our, cu our cu customers and partners migrate to the cloud, modernize the apps, and again, based on research that's out there, you can speed up app deployment and development by 60% by leveraging the power of the cloud. So the benefits are out there for, for customers to get access to. It's a question of finding the right combination of people, process, and technology to get you there. And, and Unisys, being a very trusted advisor, is certainly able to help you accelerate that journey and get you to meet your business outcomes. So let me, let me ask the two of you what might be an uncomfortable question. And that is, obviously Unisys is in the business of managing things that aren't in cloud also. Right. You have very, very large existing customers that are spending right. money with you. Right. And if they'll just stay still and not do anything yep. and not change, you'll keep money, making money into the future. Aren't some of these things that you're doing as a trusted advisor almost counterintuitive from a, from a finance perspective at Unisys, at least in the short term? How do you, how do you balance that? It's a, it's a great question, Dave, and for us, we are customer obsessed. So that's, I know one of the AWS principles and we, right. we live by that as well, right? So, customer comes first and, and doing the right thing by them, whether it is the, the total cost of ownership, whether it's getting the security posture right, that comes first for us. And if, if moving them to a public cloud will help them achieve that, we will do that. Right, so even if it means that our bill is going to be lower, right? So we'll give you a great example there. Um, Unisys, as you know, Dave, has been in the mainframe business. And we've got customers that are still on clear path, right? So um, even with those customers, we help them with both transitions. We can run clear path today on public cloud. And we also help with modernization, right? So we always do the right thing by the uh, customer. It's really the customer's choice in terms of what does the business warrant 
how much business disruption are they willing to take as we do this modernization journey? And that's what determines us, and that's what makes us trusted advisors. Um, we're not looking out for the bottom line there in terms of how much our bill would be. Yep. Well, that's, a, that, that's actually a great place to wrap up. Uh, I think it's hilarious that you mentioned mainframe since you were five years old. <laughs> You gave, me a, you gave me a blank stare when I mentioned stuff Unisys was doing 20 years ago. Anupriya Anupam from Unisys, thank you so much. It's a great point to close on. You're a trusted advisor when you're doing things that are truly in the customer's best interest and not just in your own company's best interest. I'm Dave Nicholson for theCUBE. We'd like to thank you for joining our continuous coverage at AWS reInvent 2021. Stay tuned because we are your leader in hybrid tech event coverage.